valproic acid what is valproic acid valproic acid is a simple fatty acid this simple fatty acid can be used in the various clinical conditions like the generalized seizures focal seizures absence seizures as well as prophylaxis of migraine and bipolar disorders so this is one of the drug which is in the multiple clinical conditions now in this video let us see how this valproic acid is useful in all these clinical conditions and what is its mechanism of action and what are the possible side effects of this valproic acid and how it is given in all these situations so first of all let us see what is the structure of valproic acid already we have seen that valproic acid is a simple uh, fatty acid so it is having the structure like this and we can observe this carboxylic acid so we can start the numbering from the carboxylic acid so this is 1 this is 2 3 4 and 5 now it is having the 5 carbon carboxylic acid so commonly we can call it as valeric acid valeric acid is a common name of the pentanoic acid now this valeric acid is having a side chain at the second position what is this side chain this side chain is nothing but the propyl side chain so now this valproic acid can be called as 2 propyl valeric acid or by using the systematic name it can be called as 2 propyl pentanoic acid and why it is called as valproic acid so from the valeric acid we can take the val and propyl we can take the pro and from the carboxylic acid we can take the suffix oic acid so now it is val plus pro plus oic acid that is a valproic acid so valproic acid is nothing but the 2 propyl valeric acid now let us see how this valproic acid acts Before going to discuss the mechanisms of valproic acid, first of all, let us see what are the possible mechanisms for anti-epileptics to act. Anti-epileptics act by inhibition of the excitation or enhancement of the inhibition. So, anti-epileptics may generally act by blocking the sodium channels or blocking the calcium channels or opening of potassium channels. Otherwise, they can also affect the mediators like the glutamate. They can inhibit the glutamate. Glutamate is one of an excitatory mediator. Otherwise, they can increase the GABA. GABA is an inhibitory mediator. So, anti-epileptics can act by more than one mechanism. But here, how this valproic acid is going to act? Even the exact mechanism by which the valproic acid acts as an anti-epileptic is not clear. But still, we have few of the evidence by which the valproic acid thought to be producing the anti-epileptic action. So here, one of the possible mechanism is to increase the GABA, and another possible mechanism is to decrease the sodium channels as well as decrease the calcium channels. And apart from these effects, the valproic acid can also act by so many other mechanisms which which are responsible for its anti-epileptic as well as uh, anti-manic actions. Now let us go one by one. But uh, in all of these mechanisms, the increase in the GABA action is the main mechanism of the valproic acid. Now the GABA is going to be converted into succinic semialdehyde by the enzyme GABA transaminase enzyme, and the succinic semialdehyde then is going to be converted into succinate by the succinic semialdehyde dehydrogenase enzyme. Now this succinate can enter into the TCA cycle and it is going to be recycled. Now what is the action of this valproic acid in this pathway? Valproic acid can block this uh, succinic semialdehyde dehydrogenase enzyme activity. which may result in the increased levels of the succinic semialdehyde and when the succinic semialdehyde levels are going to be increased it can inhibit the gaba transaminase enzyme by negative feedback mechanism in this way valproic acid is going to indirectly inhibit the gaba transaminase action when the gaba transaminase is going to be inhibited the valproic acid may increase the gaba levels So this is one of the important mechanism of the valproic acid, which increases the GABA levels, which produces the inhibitory effect in the CNS. Another possible mechanism of the valproic acid is on the MEK pathway. MEK, mitosin-activated protein kinase. This is one of the phosphorylating enzymes which produces the phosphorylation cascade. This MEK can stimulate the extracellular signal-regulated kinases (ERK). which are again the phosphorylating enzymes which promote the release of so many mediators and among them one of the important mediator is the bdnf brain derived neurotropic factors because bdnf is a neurotropic factor which promotes the genesis this bdnf can increase the neurogenesis in this way whenever this mek and erk pathway is going to be stimulated it can promote the neurogenesis 
Now, what is the role of valproic acid? Valproic acid can stimulate this ERK so that it can promote the neurogenesis. So, increased neurogenesis caused by valproic acid is one of the possible mechanism for its uh, anti-epileptic action. And whenever these BDNF levels are going to be increased, it can increase the expression of the GABA receptors. When the GABA receptors are increased, it promotes the GABA action. In this way, valproic acid not only increases the GABA levels, it also increases the expression of the GABA receptors, thereby GABA-mediated action is going to be increased by valproic acid. And now let us see another mechanism of the valproic acid. Valproic acid is going to inhibit the HDAC, histone deacetylase enzyme. This enzyme is responsible for the deacetylation of the amino acids on the histones. So when this enzyme is inhibited, it results in the hyperacetylation of the histones, particularly at the lysine residues. And when the histone is uh, hyperacetylated, it produces a DNA relaxation, which promotes a gene transcription. In this way, valproic acid can promote the gene transcription and one of the important gene that is going to be produced is again the BDNF gene, brain derived neurotropic factor gene, which increase the release of the BDNF. This mechanism again leads to the neurogenesis. And apart from these mechanisms, valproic acid can directly block the sodium channels at the cortex, which inhibits the excitatory pathways. And it can also inhibit the long chain fatty acid synthesis, which may be responsible for the synthesis of the inflammatory prostaglandins. And valproic acid is also effective against the blocking of T type calcium channels, which are more important in the absence seizures. In this way, valproic acid acts by multiple mechanisms. And another mechanism of valproic acid is on the inostal pathway. Inostal triphosphate, one of the important secondary messenger, is going to be converted into inostal monophosphate by the phosphatase enzymes. And then this inostal monophosphate is converted to free inositol by the enzyme inostal monophosphatase enzyme. This enzyme is very important because it produces a free inostal which is again reconverted into phosphatidyl inostal and again recycled into IP3. So recycling of IP3 is mediated by generation of the free inositol. Now this valproic acid is going to block this inositol monophosphatase enzyme, thereby it inhibits the generation of free inositol. This mechanism is just like the lithium. Lithium also inhibits the generation of the free inositol from the inositol monophosphates. Valproic acid can also inhibit the protein kinase C system, which is actually mediated through the diacyl glycerol. So valproic acid decreases excitation produced by IP3 as well as diacylglycerol. So these are the possible mechanisms of the valproic acid, but which mechanism is exactly responsible for anti-epileptic action is unknown. But because of all these actions, valproic acid is useful in the treatment of various types of seizures as well as bipolar depression, as well as the migraine prophylaxis. And valproic acid is given as divalproic. What is divalproic? Particularly in the extended release formulation of uh, valproic acid, divalproic is going to be used. Divalproic is a combination of valproic acid plus sodium valproate, which are given in the 1 is to 1 ratio. That means 50% valproic acid and 50% sodium valproate. So we have two formulations in the market. One is a divalproic and another one is a sodium valproate. Whether both of these formulations are equal or not. Actually, the both of the formulations are not equal. The divalproics will not release the same amount of the valproic acid, so both are not equivalent and interchangeable. And divalproic formulation is going to be used in order to decrease the gastrointestinal side effects of the valproic acid. How it is given? It can be given as a tablet or it can be given as a capsule and even it can be given as a solution. As a tablet, it can be given as a immediate release tablet uh, at a dose of uh, 125 mg, 250 mg and 500 mg. And as an extended release tablet, it can be given at uh, 250 mg as well as 500 mg. And in the capsule form, again it is given as an immediate release uh, capsule which is at the dose of uh, 250 mg and uh, extended release uh, capsule at a dose of uh, 125 mg. And the solution can be used for oral purpose where it is given at a dose of uh, 250 mg per 5 ml and it is given as a parental IV solution where it is uh, given at a dose of 100 mg per ml. So these are the various uh, formulations and the doses of the valproic acid. Side effects. 
Valproic acid can produce side effects like the headache, drowsiness, dizziness, and insomnia as a few of the common side effects. And it can also produce a hair loss, particularly the valproic acid can produce the thinning of the hair as well as curling of the hair. And it can also promote the weight leading to weight gain. And pancreatitis is one of the important side effects that can be observed with the valproic acid when it is used for a long term. And another important side effect is the hepatotoxicity. When valproic acid is used for several months, it can produce the weakness, lethargy, malice. So malice is a feeling of uh, uneasiness and discomfort in the patient and anorexia, loss of appetite, as well as nausea and vomiting are observed with the valproic acid. All these symptoms indicate that there is a chance of liver failure in the patients uh, with the treatment of valproic acid. And it can also decrease the control of seizures, so the anti-epileptic activity is also going to be lost with the development of hepatotoxicity. So that's why whenever valproic acid is going to be given, liver test should be done and liver test should be done in two phases. Before the treatment, they should be done in order to assess the functionality of the liver in the patient. And even after the treatment, up to the six months at a regular intervals, liver test should be done in order to assess any chance of development of hepatotoxicity. So whenever hepatotoxicity is going to be developed, the valproic acid may be replaced with uh, any other anti-epileptic drug. And another important side effect is the teratogenicity. Valproic acid is highly teratogenic and it can produce a neural tube defects, NTD. So among them, one of the important defect is the spina bifida. Spina bifida is the incomplete closure of the bony spine, thereby the strength of the spine is going to be reduced. And it can also produce a cleft lip and cleft palate. That means it can produce the opening in the upper lip and mouth in the children. And it can also produce some cardiovascular and genitourinary defects in the newborns. So that's why the valproic acid is highly teratogenic and it should not be given to the pregnant woman. Even to the woman liable to the pregnant, the valproic acid should be avoided. In the woman with the childbearing age, the valproic acid should be contraindicated. Where it is used? It is used in the multiple types of epilepsy. So it can be used in the generalized seizures as well as focal seizures. The use of valproic acid in these two type of seizures may be due to its action on the GABA as well as sodium channels. As we have seen that valproic acid increase the GABA levels and GABA receptors as well as it blocks the sodium channels which may reduce the generalized seizures as well as focal seizures. And this Drug can also be used in the absent seizures and this action of valproic acid may be attributed to its action on the T-type calcium channels. And valproic acid is also used in the bipolar disorder, particularly it is used in the acute treatment of mania, manic phase can be treated by the valproic acid. Even the exact mechanism is not known, the anti-manic action may be attributed to its lithium-like actions of the valproate on the inositol pathway. And valproic acid is also used in the maintenance therapy of the bipolar depression where it mainly controls the manic phase. And valproic acid is also used in the prophylax of the migraine because it can inhibit the synthesis of the prostaglandins and it is also used in the emergency treatment of status epilepticus. Status epilepticus is a condition of continuous generation of convulsions in the patients which can be controlled by valproic acid. But the treatment in the status epilepticus is a off-label use of the valproic acid. So that's about the valproic acid. Valproic acid can be given as a divalproic, which is a combination of uh, valproic acid and sodium valproate in 1 is to 1 ratio. And valproic acid is a simple mono fatty acid, which is uh, chemically a 2-propyl valeric acid. And valproic acid can act by several mechanisms. It can increase the GABA by inhibiting the succinic semialdehyde dehydrogenase enzyme by which it can increase the GABA levels or it can increase the neurogenesis by activating the ERK pathway which promotes the neurogenesis. And it can also inhibit the HDAC, histone deacetylase enzyme, thereby it can increase the gene transcription and the promotion of the genes. And it can also interfere with the generation of the free inositol in the inositol triphosphate pathway so that it can block the inositol triphosphate as well as protein kinase C pathway and it can also block the sodium channels, T-type calcium channels and long chain fatty acid synthesis by all of these mechanisms it produces anti-epileptic action as well as anti-manic action and this drug because of the multiple mechanisms it can be used in the multiple types of epilepsy like the generalized seizures, focal seizures and absent seizures and it can also be used as an anti-manic agent to control the manic phase 
and it can also be used in the prophylaxis of the migraine as well as uh, in the treatment of status epilepticus as an off-label purpose.